Hello, I'd like to talk to you today about CPAP, that is Continuous Positive Airway Pressure Technology, and related technologies such as APAP, BiPAP, and VPAP, which vary the air pressure delivered to the lungs. My goal here is to help you get a better sleep if you're using one of these machines, and especially to reach out to the CPAP engineering community so that we can solve some of the very glaring problems with this technology, uh, many of which I think are neither expensive nor all that difficult to solve. So here is my uh, ResMed AutoSet 2, uh, which is a variable pressure device, so I suppose that means it's an APAP, and it's got a humidifier and other, some other great features, which quite frankly, in my opinion, make it the best uh, CPAP that I've ever used, certainly for the money. Uh, you might want to consider getting one yourself, but having said that, uh, it still suffers from some glaring and highly irritating technological problems. Uh, one of which, by the way, results uh, relates to the uh, plastic and metal reinforced tubing, uh, which you can see here and we'll, we'll discuss in a bit. And uh, secondly, by the way, this is my mask. Uh, it's uh, also made by ResMed. It's a Mirage Quattro, which is a full face mask. This is uh, definitely the most comfortable mask, uh, nasal or otherwise, that I've ever used. Uh, but again, I, I wouldn't sell it as being comfortable. Okay, so this presentation is called Why CPAP Sucks and What to Do About It. It's July 15th, 2010, and I choose to remain, remain anonymous because this presentation is about technology, not about me. So first, let's remember that there's a reason we use CPAPs, and that's that they save lives. CPAP and related technologies, APAP, BiPAP, and VPAP, improves SpO2, that is, blood oxygen saturation during sleep. Average SpO2 level clearly matters, but minimum SpO2 is critically important. We all know that damage to the brain and other organs can result if SpO2 is too low for too long. In other words, the longer an apnea event lasts and the lower the resulting SpO2, the more hazardous to your health it is. When SpO2 is low for an extended period, an adrenaline burst will occur, rousing if not waking the apnea sufferer. While it's obviously necessary to rouse from this low SpO2 state, an adrenaline burst can cause a massive rise in blood pressure. A massive rise in blood pressure, in turn, could cause a blood vessel to burst with potentially disastrous consequences. This possibility may be amplified during sleep when people are lying down, putting their cerebral arteries at greater risk. Adrenaline spikes might also result in arterial plaque separating from the blood vessel lining, although this has not been proven. If this were to occur, the chunk of plaque could then block an artery somewhere. So CPAP, in theory, prevents all this by ensuring that sufficient oxygen is always delivered to the lungs, or let's say most of the time. It helps a lot anyway. As I mentioned, APAP and BiPAP, and for that matter VPAP, vary the delivered air pressure in an effort to better accommodate exhalation and thus comfortable sleep. There are some reasons, however, uh, why some doctors consider this feature undesirable, I believe related to something called ventilatory effect. Anyhow, the reality of CPAP use. Now obviously, a CPAP can only help you if you use it throughout your sleeping hours. Most patients, including me, find CPAP uncomfortable at best. For this reason, they tend to practice only partial compliance. In other words, they tend to remove the mask in the middle of the night, sometimes while in a poor mental state which inhibits their judgment, as I've done myself many times. So for instance, using CPAP 70% of the time does not provide 70% of the benefits. I mean, think of the ex extreme case. What if you were to stop breathing for 30% of the night? You'd never wake up. So what we have then is a theoretically wonderful technology which provides much less benefit than the ideal use data would lead us to believe. So why people don't comply with CPAP? Let's face it, CPAP isn't sexy, especially not nasal CPAP, which leaves you with snot leaking out of your nose. Anecdotally, there is a negative impact on sex life. CPAP smells like a plastic shower curtain. The odor dissipates somewhat after a few weeks of continuous use, but it persists at an intolerable level. The odor from CPAP is probably due to chemicals in the plastic tubing or mask or housing, Perhaps DEHP, which is a plasticizer uh, related to polyvinyl chloride, that is like uh, the plastic in shower curtains. Bisphenol A, which is of course the infamous plasticizer added to soft drink bottles or who knows what else. And once in a long while, electronic or motor components inside the CPAP burn up, producing toxic smoke, which inevitably works its way into the air intake and eventually the lungs. <clears throat> CPAPs never get the air pressure right. Either it's too low to prevent apnea or too high, resulting in burping and stomach pain, particularly in the morning, and also waking at night. CPAP tubing is reinforced with a metal coil, as you saw in the first photo, which scrapes against the side of the table or bed, creating night-long noise as your head changes position and drags the tube with it. The mask is usually uncomfortable. 
and face masks don't work with moisturizer on the skin. It can be very irritating. Empirically, nasal congestion causes APAPS to increase the air pressure to a disruptive and unnecessary level, resulting in stomach pain and waking and all those problems. CPAPs are expensive to maintain, even after paying the steep entry price, and they are severe pain for frequent travelers, particularly if they fail on the road, as mine has. Now, CPAPs seem to exacerbate other diseases. I mean, first of all, do you really believe that ramming plastic fumes into your lungs for decades has no effect on your health? Fumes come from tubing, motor coils, electronic components, printed circuit boards, and probably lubricants. Does anyone care to bet that CPAPs don't contribute to liver, lung, or other cancers? CPAPs dry out your throat and lungs, which inhibits immune function. Some come with humidifiers, as does mine, which partially prevents this, although excessive humidity can create other problems. And what are the odds that you'll experience a component burnout in your lifetime, resulting in toxic smoke entering your lungs while you sleep? Small, yes. Insignificant? Perhaps not. Now here's what the engineers need to fix, I think. First of all, find a chemical coating or plastic production process that results in odorless or near odorless plastic for tubing and housing, and particularly not carcinogenic uh, plastic fumes. Wrap the metal coil tubing in plastic to reduce frictional noise. Isolate all electronic boards and components so that one, electronic plastic fumes never find their way into the air intake, and two, our lungs are protected from component blowouts. Design a blowout alarm system. If the CPAP fails or starts to malfunction, wake us up. This will protect us from toxic smoke when components catch fire, not to mention the ensuing miscalibrated respiratory assistance. Consider eliminating the tubing altogether. For example, can a CPAP be built into a helmet? Divers wear their breathing apparatus, why can't we? Get the pressure right. Again, the best APAPs are still miserable failures where dynamic pressure calibration is concerned. Stop shoving air into my stomach when I'm congested. But finally, use lithium ion batteries. We need to isolate the crazy wall socket, particularly in areas where the electric system is less than reliable, from the expensive and mission critical CPAP. Now here's some easy ways to improve your sleep. Stop eating refined carbohydrates, especially processed or wheat based foods, which make you fat and exacerbate your apnea problem not to mention contribute to diabetes. Avoid foods which clog your nose. Pasteurized milk is infamous for causing this problem as it causes a histamine response. Be alert to food allergies which cause your throat to close a little even hours after consumption. Nuts, especially walnuts, do this to me. Which foods do this to you? Stop eating early in the day. Basically this helps maintain, your, uh, maintain a lower level of blood sugar during the night which is better for your health and helps you sleep better. And obviously, avoid caffeine and other stimulants. Now, when you really hate your CPAP, here are some things you can do. Learn about the Aveo TSD. You can look it up on the web, and I also plan to cover it in my next video. Learn about a company called Imthera Medical. This startup is creating a neuromodulator to keep the tongue out of the airway during sleep without major surgery or the need for CPAP. Ask your doctor about the many sleep surgeries available, especially maxillomandibular advancement, which seems to have an enduring long-term effect superior to other procedures, although it is rather involved. Email this video to a friend. Eventually, the CPAP companies might listen. And of course, make your own video about why you hate CPAP. And I might add, unfortunately, if you suffer from central sleep apnea, as far as I know, and you should of course ask your doctor, uh, CPAP and related technologies are the only viable solution for you. So thanks for listening.